Hello and welcome to another AI and Games article. Um, this is Tommy Thompson once again and this time round I'm doing something a little bit different. Um, as you've seen if you've been looking at my AI and Games articles previously, usually I'm focusing on a particular topic, um, whether it's a methodology or I'm looking at the particular interest of say some sort of game for the purposes of research and development. However, this time it came more from my interest as a gamer. The more astute of you will have realized that this article is focused upon the Arkham series. <clears throat> Developed by Rocksteady Games, um, the series kicked off in 2009 with Batman Arkham Asylum. Uh, the second game was then released in 2011 and that's Arkham City. Uh, for the next game in the series, Arkham Origins, uh, development was actually shifted over to Warner Brothers Montreal and also Splash Damage um, for this prequel in the series, which takes place prior to the events of Arkham Asylum and is going to conclude this year in 2014 with Rocksteady once again at the helm with Arkham Knight. Being a fan of the series, um, one of my favourite parts was that how the artificial intelligence and non-player characters helped maintain not only the immersion but also the sense of empowerment that playing as Batman provides. So this article addresses this on two fronts. Not only how did Rocksteady do it, but really how intelligent did it need to be in order to make the game as fun as it is. So, for those of you who've never actually played the Arkham series, and shame on you for doing so, we can break up into two chunks. First part is combat. This is uh, mostly about trying to build very large combos, and it's a very rhythmic nature as you can see here. Characters try and come attack you one after the other, and you're trying to maintain this flow as you take them all out as smoothly as possible. On the other hand, we also have the stealth segments, and these are f where certainly the artificial intelligence is more prominent. Um, in this sequence, we focus on trying to take out all the characters as quietly as possible and also with the hope that they never see us really sort of embodying the kind of the, the ethos of Batman from the comic books and also from the movies and we can utilize an awful lot of his different gadgets such as what we're seeing here which is the detective mode vision allowing us to then see what's happening with all the different characters where they are behind walls but also get an indication of their current state what their mood is how they feel and really this just embodies everything we want in a good Batman game and it's by and large the main reason why it's been so successful because you can hunt the enemy characters and it's interesting to observe them during gameplay. What separates the stealth segment from combat is now the guards are armed and unlike Superman Batman can't take much firepower to the chest before he dies. In fact if an enemy's got you in his line of sight a couple of shots and you're down so you need to keep quiet you need to avoid the AI and ultimately spook them so much that you can trick them into falling into your trap. And now for the science part. You may be wondering, well, how exactly does it all work? <coughs> and, well, as intimated by Tim Hannigan from Rocksteady Studios when he presented at the Game AI conference in 2012, the answer is finite state machines. Now, this answer was a little bit of a surprise. Um, finite state machines have been around in uh, AI game development and commercial titles for many years. However, we've been gradually moving away from it, and it was a genuine surprise by many, considering that it was actually awarded um, AI of the Year uh, by AIGameDev.com. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with finite state machines, um, they're a really nice way of just conceptualizing what a character is supposed to do at a particular point in time and what things will force it to change what it's doing. If you consider the example currently being shown, we have one state A and another state B and its events, like specifically the event X, will result in a transfer from the state A to state B. This is something that's happening in the game that said, right, we are no longer using this particular behaviour which encapsulates state A and we're moving over to something else. So if I were to dig out an old favourite of mine, such as Pac-Man, and we look at the ghost's behaviour, ghosts by default will chase Pac-Man. So in the chase state, there is a particular behaviour that is associated um, with how they actually satisfy chasing. And as you know, well hopefully you know, but each of the ghosts in the Pac-Man games always behave differently from one another, so it doesn't really matter how they go about it, but ultimately they're all chasing him. 
However, in the event that Pac-Man consumes a power pill, all the bots will then move into an evade state because their job is to try and get away from you because at this point the player can then maximise their score by trying to munch you all up. And only once that power pill has dissipated that they will then resume back in the chase mode. Or actually there's a small caveat that they might actually have been eaten and then they come back. But, you know, just for the sake of example, work with me here. So you might be wondering, well, what's all the fuss then about the finite state machines that Rocksteady have implemented? And the thing is, it's about the polish. It's about how refined these finite state machines are. Um, given the fact that finite state machines, if you're not careful, can explode in size and become very, very cumbersome to manage. And it's really evident when you're playing the stealth modes. And I've decided to record a little bit of footage here to walk you through what I'm talking about. So here we are. Um, I have now put on my cape and cowl. I am the Batman. Well, not quite. But the key thing is this is one of the first stealth sequences. In fact, I believe it is the first stealth sequence that's in Arkham Asylum. Um, not very far into the game. So here we are. We're looking in the hospital area and there's five armed henchmen going in directly. Well immediately result in my death. They're all carrying shotguns and as you can see in the screen at the moment they're in a quite, pretty calm state. Now what I've decided to do for this experiment rather is that I'm going to take one of them out and then observe how the first responder actually reacts. Um, what I decided to do was actually plot what it looked like, the finite, a rough finite state machine of what he's actually doing. Now I will say in advance that whether or not I'm correct I can't tell you, because this is certainly not something that Rocksteady are going to go into this much detail to talk about. So here we go, I've claimed my first victim. And our finite state machine in the top right corner of the video is following this character here. He was originally in a search pattern, and then he's identified the fact that someone is now down. He starts to move towards the disturbance, and upon catching a line of sight, announce the discovery of the body to the others. This has then triggered everybody else moving towards him. Well, he also moved towards that body. And one of the tricks there, as you noted, that there was an animation and some audio that went off. The animation and audio serves two purposes. One, it gives the player an indication as to why certain things start happening. We start seeing that characters are moving and we need to have some sort of rationale behind that. In addition, it also gives the player a false sense of how intelligent the bots are. They're not as smart as you think they are, but the thing is that that audio and then the subsequent movement of the other bots makes you think they're a lot smarter. So once they finished arguing with each other, they started to search again. And now the whole search process continues. One of them has now spotted what's happened to the other character. He's announced to the others. They're now all going to converge on that point. Also, you may have observed at this point, as you can see on the detective vision, that the bots are now appearing nervous. Now, what does that actually mean in terms of gameplay? Well, it serves two purposes again. One, this might actually be part of how the finite state machine triggers certain changes. Um, certain animations, particularly when the characters are absolutely terrified, are only, only occur when they're in that nervous state. However, it's also another element that gives you an indication that things are changing as a result of your actions, and it helps maintain that immersive gameplay. Now, given I have a little bit of time between... Um, that last takedown and the next one I'm going to do, let's take a moment to actually look at where they're moving. Remember that the state that they're currently in is suggesting that they're going to search for a new location and they're pathfinding in the local environment. Now one of the things that was intimated by Tim Hannigan, which is a, such a simple but effective technique, is that the bots will very rarely backtrack. In fact, they will very rarely turn round when they're pathfinding. Now, why do you want to do that? Well, for the obvious reason that there's nothing more frustrating in a stealth game if you're sneaking up behind a character and then at the very last moment when you're not paying attention, he turns around and when he does that, shoots you in the face. Now, you might have been planning that movement for two minutes and then suddenly it's all gone to waste and it becomes incredibly frustrating. So even something as simple as that just helps maintain your excitement when you're playing it. So while we watch these characters rather aimlessly wander the environment, because let's face it, they're not going to find me up here, is that we'll observe that not only do little lines of dialogue come out every now and then to help kind of get an indication of what their state is, their emotional state, but we also see some of these animations. The character in front of me just now just took a moment to look over the railing. Now, this actually helps 
in another respect, in that it's very difficult to judge what they're going to do next. Um, certainly watching them, it's very difficult to figure out what their pathfinding plan is going to be. I mean, sure, to an extent you can predict it because the, mo the environment's only going to be modelled so much. But every now and then they'll just stop and they'll take a little moment to observe their surroundings. And that keeps you on edge. You can't then become too complacent. You've got to move quickly. And if you are going to attack them, you've got to bear in mind that you're only going to have a very, very small window to do so. Okay, let's move on a little bit. Because I was taking far too long just messing around. Let's take this guy out. And I don't know about you, but personally, I really like doing the inverted takedowns. It's a pretty cool trick. So let's watch them again. And we're going to see a very similar behaviour once again. And this is when, hopefully you might appreciate, that this finite state machine that I've originally modelled can actually be distilled down to something a lot smaller. Because ultimately, what each character is doing is moving to locations and playing animations. Again, I can't say for certain that that's actually how things are done um, in the Arkham series. And I would imagine that it's a lot more complex than that. But that's ultimately what it boils down to. And this is where I have to give full credit to the Rocksteady team because the level of polish that has went into continually testing these finite state automata to make sure that they work very smoothly and, you know, don't break. You don't see any example where the characters exhibit outright weird behaviour which then breaks your experience. And that's what makes this so much more fun. Probably a lot more fun than it should be. So in closing... What makes the Arkham games, uh, for myself, both personally and professionally, so interesting is that they're fundamentally built of a very simple technique and have then been iteratively developed, continually refined and polished to a point where it creates something very engaging and very immersive and help essentially provide the key experience of the Arkham series in terms of its gameplay, particularly in the sense that it helps embody so much of what we would expect in a Batman game, and full credit to the team over at Rocksteady for achieving that. With that, if you're interested in checking out more, I do have a full written article over on my website. Thanks for listening, and keep an eye out for some videos coming out over the summer. Bye!